This is Seven National News and in our top story, the UAE and India have issued a joint statement concluding the Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi and Deputy Supreme Commander of the UAE Armed Forces, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan's first ever state visit to India. The statement revealed that the Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi and the Prime Minister of India have reaffirmed their commitment to building a comprehensive strategic partnership agreement for the 21st century, anchored in values of respect, mutual understanding and dynamic cooperation. Recognizing the need to further develop and strengthen the historical links that bind the UAE and India, the two leaders signed a wide range of agreements totaling seven, including those for cybersecurity, infrastructure investment, renewable energy, space cooperation and insurance. The two sides expressed satisfaction at the level of bilateral trade, which amounted to 59 billion US dollars in 2014-2015, reaffirming their resolve to substantially increase trade by 60% over the next five years. The two sides examined various tariff and non-tariff barriers and agreed to enhance the trade of priority commodities and expand the access of goods and services in both markets. India conveyed its interest in partnering and sharing various infrastructure projects being undertaken in the UAE in preparation for the World Expo, while the UAE noted its interest in investing in infrastructure development in India, especially in priority areas such as railways, roads, ports and shipping. As a part of his three-day visit to India, His Highness the Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi inaugurated a new wharf on Friday at DP World and Hava Sheva Gateway Terminal at Mumbai's Jawaharlal Nehru Port, which is India's largest container port. The Crown Prince also visited the Bombay Stock Exchange, which is now Asia's oldest and the world's fastest, with a median trade speed of six microseconds. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed met with BSE's CEOs and a number of business people and also exchanged talks with them about the existing economic trade investment between the UAE and India. The UAE and Panama have set up a joint cooperation committee on trade and investment that will serve as a legal base when launching joint investment projects. The move came during His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Zayed Al Nahyan, the UAE's foreign minister, recent visit. It was noted that the committee will include the participation of Emirati companies in the public tenders of the government's five-year investment plan, especially in the areas of energy and shipping cooperation, as announced by Panama's Vice President and Foreign Minister Isabel de San Malo. His Highness Sheikh Abdullah said that the UAE is interested in getting involved with Panama in a number of areas, such as banking logistics, energy airports and infrastructure. The new committee will promote and coordinate programs on the political, economic, trade, cultural, judicial, security, social, environment, tourism, technology and humanitarian aid areas and in other areas of interest to the two countries. The UAE's decision to open an embassy in Panama in 2017 was also confirmed during the meetings, while Panama will upgrade its consulate in the UAE to an embassy. The Ministry of Interior has deployed 82 automatic defibrillators in different locations across the country in order to help deal with emergencies and cases of heart failure. A number of community members have been trained by the American Heart Association to operate the machines and save lives, including staff members working in public areas such as malls, shopping centres, the municipality and government. Lieutenant Colonel Omar Ahmed al Dahari, the Chief of the Training Section at the Emergency and Public Safety Department, explained that the automatic medical equipment is used to treat heart rhythm disorders that, through electric shocks and are used on people with suspected heart failure. Some of the symptoms include fainting, irregular breathing and a weak or absent pulse. Trainees have been awarded certificates accredited by the American Heart Association to conduct CPR and use the defibrillators. He continued that the machines are user-friendly, safe and smart, and they will not provide electric shocks until they analyse a pulse and heart signals. 
44% of students surveyed in universities in Abu Dhabi and Sharjah reported that they were bullied about their weight. According to a local daily, nearly half of the 420 interviewed, whose age averaged 23, revealed that they'd been bullied or teased about their weight, with the report also revealing that 108 cases led to eating disorder behaviours. The report was rolled out by student counsellor Lily O'Hara at the Emirates College of Advanced Education, who stated that the prevalence of eating disorders has been looked at in the past, but we haven't looked at how people are treated based on their body weight. Should they be teased, discriminated against or treated poorly? The findings indicated that the problem seems to be increasing, although the degree of body image dissatisfaction seemed consistent with many other countries. The study found the highest levels of eating disorders and feelings of low self-esteem of any study on the topic to date, with 30% reporting such symptoms, compared with an average of 20% in earlier studies. The Dubai Polo and Equestrian Club played host to the Longines Valentine's Day Polo Cup in association with La Martina on Friday. In a romantic setting, the crowds were treated to five polo teams made up of local and international players who battled it out for the 2016 Cup. Rashid Bindrai of the Bindrai polo team stated that games like these help those that are not professional understand the game a little bit more, and that their mission is to help put Dubai on the global polo map alongside the likes of Argentina and the UK. The tournament was set up by um, Dubai Polo Equestrian uh, Club. Um, it was a lovely tournament to be part of. Um, I think that in Dubai we need these tournaments as patrons to be able to play. Um, usually you get 18 goals or 14 goals. These are um, very high standard polo, it's very fast. So for us it's always good to play some slow polo and get, get a, a bit of the hang of it, you know rather than the professionals playing most of the time. And it's always good to have a lot of uh, people showing up here. You know, we try to, us at the Hab Tours, um, other teams, Zaydan, Sheikh Amitha, we all try to um, increase the popularity here in Polo and increase the standard especially, so it can be, uh, so we can compete worldwide, you know. Um, and not just have it in England, so to Grande in Argentina. So we want to put uh, Dubai in the map for polo. As well as the fantastic first-class polo action, families and guests also enjoyed a whole host of additional activities, as well as a delicious brunch and picnic baskets on the field. The men were also able to treat their ladies to on-field spa treatments. We are really now on the map with all the other international locations where you play polo, for example in Florida, or the United States or in the UK, uh, Argentina of course, and, and Dubai is mentioned in the same sentence and that's just really in thanks to all the local patrons that put up a lot of um, effort uh, in putting teams together, getting uh, one of the, some of the best international players that are in the world into Dubai playing. So we really have to thank them uh, that they enable us to put up these phenomenal events events where we can entertain, have the sport and, and get it out of the niche more into the open. Uh, Dubai Polo and Equestrian Club is open to the public, so we are here every Friday. We always have nice matches and we always have fantastic brunch um, together with the cheese. So for cheese lovers, really the place to be. One of the most um, anticipated events of the season is the Gold Cup, which is coming up right in March. So it's uh, next month, so watch out on the calendar. We will close the season with a polo festival where we really will make sure that not only will we have a great game, but we'll open it up to the public that people that usually would not go on a horse, we will try to, to get them on the horse, try to start riding and, and really um, let them try and practice polo because it's, it's a fascinating sport it's, it's, and it's a lot of fun. And finally, looking to other news now, Italian brand Paul and Shark revealed their spring summer collection over the weekend, including sportswear, smart casual and luxury for both men and women. At their store in Mall of the Emirates, sportswear was the core of the Paul and Shark collection, boasting a broad colour palette ranging from classic whites and blues to bolder limes and fuchsias, along with performance details and materials. 
Some of the new trends included rubber coated linen double breasted jackets, 3D mesh jackets, as well as classic Vichy windbreakers. The innovative Typhoon 20,000 also made an appearance with a high level of waterproofing and wind protection with an ultra thin breathable membrane. The jackets also feature EMW technology, which covers the phone pocket and screens from electromagnetic waves. The Smart Casual line is a more sophisticated interpretation of the sportswear with blazers and wool jumpers, while the luxury collection of jackets, knitwear, shirts and trousers are made of high quality silk and cashmere. The core business of uh, the brand has always been uh, the sportswear. The sportswear inspired by the yachting, by the sea, by the, by the water. Since um, now three seasons we have launched two new projects which are the Smart Casual and the Luxury Collection. The Smart Casual that you have seen tonight it's still sportswear but it's a kind of sportswear that you can actually use in a city. It's more urban. You get this urban feeling and his uh, colors are not as bright as the color we normally use in our core sportswear and, uh, and uh, also the logos are not as visible as in the normal sportswear. It's, uh, and then we have uh, the luxury collection which is made with the finest fabrics and this, mm, often mixed with leather and uh, so we source these fabrics uh, in Italy as far as the classic fabrics are, are concerned and uh, when we need uh, to add some technical details or technical uh, fabrics, we normally look at Japan as a, as, as a benchmark, as a point of reference. And we like Dubai very much. We've been in Dubai since uh, many, many years. Uh, we are growing. Our collections are becoming more and more popular. And uh, for instance, uh, this store has been existing in uh, Mall, of, Mall of Emirates since uh, a few years, and we have just renovating it. We believe uh, Dubai is still a very important uh, uh, shopping destination, not only in this area of the world, but I would say worldwide.